Hello and welcome to this quick Astrenti Tips video where I'll be going through some of the most common SEMA case study mistakes students make when preparing or sitting for their case study exams. So I suppose the best thing to do would be to start off for everyone's benefit, what is the case study exam? Well, it's an essay based exam that is sat over three hours where you must role play as a member of the finance function. And in the exam, you will be expected to provide logical, technically accurate and well reasoned responses to the questions asked of you. So what are the common mistakes that are made in this exam? Well, the first common mistake is too much theory. Now, it should be known that the case study exam does require that you know how to apply the theory. The problem is that sometimes this is taken too far and what ends up happening is that students write an answer that just dumps all this theory onto the examiner but then it's not actually applied to our precinct companies, locking them out of the higher marks. An easy way to always apply a theory is to refer back to the precinct company by name dropping them and giving some sort of applied example. That way then you're not meandering off in the wrong direction too often and you're bringing this off back to the issue at hand. The next issue is not answering the question or misinterpreting the requirements. The exam makes us nervous and that is natural. What you cannot let happen is for those nerves to make you go headfirst into the exam without first carefully reading what you need to write about. You will gain a very few marks if you decide to dump all the theory you know into your solution without considering what is relevant to answering the question. Not only does this waste time, and time is precious in this exam, it also means you're losing easy marks. So carefully read the question as the very first thing you do before doing anything else. And they're very easy to spot because they're often bullet points on the question paper. So always look there first before you read all the supplementary information. Thirdly, long paragraphs makes it really hard for the examiner to award marks compared to shorter, concise and focused responses. The examiners want to award you marks, okay, but you need to make it easy for them. Having clear headers, short paragraphs, not only saves time in the exam, but it also makes it easier for the examiner to dissect your solution and award you marks for your points rather than getting lost in blocks of text. And that is why at Astrenti in our exam technique guide, what we recommend is that you write six line paragraphs to focus on this target. That way then you keep your answers focused, avoid creating overly long responses, and it overall makes your questions that much cleaner to mark. Fourth, never leave a question unanswered. Even if you're not certain, have a go. You're not awarded negatively in the exam. That is a misconception some students have. You're not negatively marked if you get something wrong. You may still get a few marks. That could be all the difference in passing the exam if you just write something down. You should also take the time to quickly work out how long you should spend on each subtask to effectively manage your time. Because often the reason why questions are left unanswered to an extent, it could be due to uncertainty, but often it's because you just simply ran out of time. And you can mitigate that risk by trying to work out how long you should spend on your subtask and then allocating your time appropriately. Because think about it, a super detailed, perfect answer to one subtask will only net you close to 50% of the marks for that question. And now suddenly you only have five minutes because you spent so long making that pivot question to do the second subtask. So you need to manage your time carefully and balance the solutions for all the subtasks. As a last resort though, okay, this is a last resort and I can't stress that enough. You can use a bullet point list to get down your thoughts, but only if you have started to run short of time. Do not substitute paragraph responses for bullet point lists as you will not be marked highly for it, but you will get some marks if you have started running out of time and it's clear that you did and you decide to just do some quick bullet points to get some of your ideas down onto paper because the examiner can't mark what isn't on there. So you may as well get something down even if it's a bullet point list. Fifth, make sure you answer all the question requirements to maximize your marks. Many subtasks have two requirements. For example, you could ask to give the pros and cons of an accounting approach. If you only give the advantages, you will at best only get half marks for that subtask. 
So you will need to make sure you answer the question fully in the exam. And to do that, you should make sure you familiarize yourself with some of the key exam verbs like recommendation, meaning to provide some sort of recommendation with justification to the examiner of why the business should do something or do a variety of things. Evaluate, meaning to provide the pros and cons of an issue or identify and explain, meaning you'll be awarded for a range of points raised. And if you can adequately explain why each of those points are relevant to the problem at hand for the precinct company in the exam question. If you learn these exam verbs, they can indicate to you not only how many requirements there are, that what SEMA called traits in the question, but it also helps you maybe even begin to plan your answer. You know that you need to put a recommendation at the end, so you've got to put that down into your plan. You know you've got to give a range of things to identify and then you've got to explain them so you can work that into your framework. And so on that note, the sixth and one of the most important points that students often get wrong and they need to do better at is creating a plan to avoid creating answers that lack a coherent argument. While you don't have a lot of time to answer, you also don't want to start writing immediately. So take a few minutes to also plan out a response. Write some of the key headers or topics you will cover and use that as a skeleton for your answer. Not only will this focus your response, but it'll also make it easier for the examiner to follow your points because it's a clear logical flow to your reasoning. So those are the common mistakes. Now, what about specific mistakes to the different levels? For example, with the operational case study level, one of the biggest issues is the application of technical knowledge. Now, while this also is important for MCS and SCS, OCS is one of the most technical case study exams of the three due to the presence of topics like linear programming, break even points, budgeting and the financial standards. These add some burden to you as the student to learn your technical theory inside and out. So if you want to do well in the OCS exam, learning your technical theory, particularly from P1 and F1, is a must. But don't forget the very first issue I said earlier, which is to apply it to the precinct company. Only when you do both will you gain full marks in the solution. So what I put up on screen then is just a sum of the topics that you will have to revise. But don't forget this list is much longer. And that is where we'd recommend referring to the theory revision series to assist you in guiding your revision. For MCS then, it's a bit more about adapting to your role as a finance manager, meaning you're not explaining the accounting methods like in OCS, but you're also not directing the business like in SES. Instead, you're providing some advice to your senior financial manager. And so your job will involve providing recommendations and offering a range of options for the senior financial manager to consider. So this, particularly with MCS, reading the question carefully is important because you can often get these evaluation or recommendation verbs thrown in there. And if you're not careful about it, you can miss that and then lose out on some marks. With MCS as well, it's a balanced exam. You're required to realistically revise things from F2, P2 and E2 in equal measure because all three of them can come up in different topics such as business models in E2, capital appraisal methods in P2 and some of the financial standards in F2 like IFRS 15. You need to be competent at these three levels in all three these three exam topic areas to really excel at the MCS exam. And a lot of questions can have this creativity aspect to it with the MCS exam, where it kind of opens up the floor to you. And there is no theory you can apply. There is no technical model for you to explain. You just have to analyze the situation and give what you believe to be a logical answer to the problem, whether that be identifying a range of problems. And we can't give you a theory that will give you those range of problems. You just have to look at the scenario and critically analyze it. Things like recommending with reasons. You have to give a judgment, a well-reasoned judgment as to why you think that is the best approach to do. And that is where the complication in MCS comes in, okay? Where OCS is more about explaining, MCS requires you to go a bit more, a bit further and be a critical analyst when it comes to the exam questions. Lastly, then for SCS, you're the senior financial manager at this level, and that means you'll be helping the board guide the strategic direction of the company. 
So what you need to have an appreciation for is the broader impact of the business and the decisions you'll be making on the strategy of the company. The long-term implications, for example, of an acquisition is quite a common topic. And so at this level, you need to be able to justify all your arguments with sound reasoning as well as strategic direction for the business. The best advice we can give here is to look at the strategic analysis we do for the precinct company to give you an idea of where the company currently is and where it is going. That can assist you in writing well-formed answers. Another tip we can also give you is to think of yourself as if you were in charge of the business, right? Ask yourself at every turn, if you're in charge of this business, what would you do? That could be the best guide and light you need when deciding how to respond to a question in the SCS exam. And so with that, I've gone through some of the feedback we've had from our markers and hopefully provided you with some helpful tips that you can use yourself in the upcoming mocks and in the case study exam. So thank you for listening. And if you'd like to learn more about us and the case study course, you can visit us at astrenti.com forward slash SEMA.